So this video is going to be a bit of a this is your life for mum. We are standing in Ormskirk in Lancashire which is where mum was born and where mum grew up before she moved to Australia. And mum has helpfully provided us with a very long, very detailed summary of all the places that mean anything to her. So we're going to go to each of those places and I'll do my best to summarise the information that mum gave us and hopefully I do it justice mum. And so where we're starting our journey is at Two Carol Crescent. Which was where mum's nan and granddad used to live, which is granddad Nibby for um, Rick and Carol and Tim, remember granddad Nibby? Um, so they lived at this house and mum used to visit them quite often. She always speaks very fondly of her memories at this house. Mum for a brief time actually lived at this house with Nana and, and Mum's Nan, which was Grandad's mum, for a short time while Grandad was posting in Cyprus, so she lived here for a little while. You can see the top right hand window, that was Mum's room when she stayed over and when she lived here. But apparently this was all covered in grass before and it was much nicer, but now it's just all paved. And this here, the famous concrete posts that mum ran into, which now gives her the scar in the middle of her head. We actually didn't tell mum that we were going to visit Ormskirk um, when we did. Uh, so what I decided to do was give her a video call uh, when we arrived at Carol Crescent and surprise her to let her know that we were there and um, managed to make a screen recording of that video, but unfortunately it doesn't record sound as well. Um, but you can see how surprised and happy she was, so that made me very happy. And um, what I might do as well is uh, throughout this video, uh, I'll get mum to uh, tell you about some of her memories of these places. Lots of really lovely, lovely memories. Um, I know playing outside Nan and Grandad's place, uh, there was a great big row of hedges and, you know, despite Grandad's loving attention to the lawn and, and everything else we still used to find a, a hole in the hedges somewhere and make it bigger and scramble out and go and play in the car park next door that kind of thing so um, it was lovely they were just wonderful people and still very much in my mind and have been for a long long time so yeah very very special Uh, so we're standing now at 1 Pennington Drive, which is where um, Mum's and Granddad, Granddad Nibby, um, moved about 12 months before Mum moved to Australia. Um, Mum says that she was sad when they left the Carol Crescent uh, house because it felt more warm and that's where she had so many memories um, and that this was a bit clear. But at the same time, she has a lot more memories here. At Nan and Grandad's place, we used to have a thing called the magic coats. That's when Carol and I would stay over and we'd go upstairs to bed. And magically in the morning when we came downstairs, we'd go to put our coats on to go outside and put our hands in our pockets. And there would be two shilling or a half a crown, whatever Grandad had in his pocket. We just thought it was magic, but obviously as we got old, we realised that he was the one that was putting the money in our pockets. And then we'd trundle off down the street and, and spend the money at the shop around the corner. For those of you who knew Grandad, you know that it's exactly the same thing for us. It was similar. Every time we'd go and visit Nana and Grandad, we, um, he'd give us a 50 cent piece to go buy some money. So obviously he kept that throughout all those years. Her Nan's sister Josie used to always be here whenever they came to visit their Nan. She said they joined at the hip. They loved uh, Josie just as much as their dad. But she said that they never had a lot of money, but. She also always felt like she had everything in there. Mum also has a very sad memory at this house and because this is where they left to travel to Australia and she remembers waving goodbye to her nan and that was the last time that she ever saw her. They both cried when it happened and every time Mum talks about her she always has tears in her eyes because she loved her nan very much and never got to see her again. Standing in the back of uh, 16 Green Lane, which is where Mum's cousin uh, Bernard used to live with, with his parents, which is um, his mum's Josie, which is mum's nan's sister. 
So we are going to meet them and we'll be able to see something from him. But this is um, where they lived and I'll put up a little photo so you can see what it looked like then and what it looks like now. This is where Bernard and Josie lived and if you see around here, that building there is where um, Mum's nan used to live, so they live very close. Just another little bit of family history, that is where uh, Grandad used to live when he was a child. Um, apparently the building is basically all a new building, but the chimney is original from the building that he lived in. With his mum and dad, which was Grandad Nibby and Mum's nan, um, while uh, during the war, that's where they lived. Now standing outside 44 Dyers Lane, this is where um, Nana's mum and dad, Grand and Grandad Briscoe, lived in Ormsco. Apparently there have been uh, quite a few changes to this house now. The carport wasn't there before and um, there's been an extension to the front of the house that extends it out. The, you'll see the front window uh, down the bottom. Um, that's the lounge room of the building and that's where all of, a lot of formal family gatherings used to happen. It's actually where Nana and Grandad had their reception for their wedding. Just on the other side of the market square, um, you'd end up at my gran and granddad Briscoe's house. They lived in Dyer's Lane and they lived in a quite, what I used to think was quite a, a posh house, I guess. It was a, a very big house. Um, it had a stairwell that went on three levels that oh, used to really impress me. I used, had really nice lush carpet. I remember in that um, house they had a, a t an old TV set, well it was new then, but um, that was in like a cabinet, so you'd open the doors of the cabinet and had push buttons at the top so you could select the um, station, not that there would be many in those days. Even the wallpaper was a, a flocked wallpaper. So it was it was quite an experience going to their house. We um, probably didn't spend as much time with them as what we did with Nan and Grandad. Although we enjoyed going down there, we weren't quite as comfortable there as what we were at Nan and Grandad's. Grandad Briscoe, he was a farmer, so he had some land that he used to own pigs and grow potatoes and other vegetables. And I remember at the house he'd built this huge, huge shed, it was massive. Um, he, we were told in no uncertain terms that we weren't allowed to go in there, uh, so we didn't go in there at all. But I think that's where he kept all his machinery and all that kind of stuff. When he grew his vegetables and so on, he also he had a big truck. It was more of a van, and at the back of the van, he used to put all of his vegetables that he'd grown and some meats from the pigs and so on, and just stocked it up with a bit of bread and eggs and that kind of thing. And he used to just drive around Ormskirk, and he used to do delivery. And he'd you know go up a street and open the back of his van, and people would come up and and buy things from him that way. And as well as that, Gran had a shop. We are now at the corner of Versco Road and Hans Lane, which is the location of Gran Briscoe's shop that she used to sell all of their goods. The shop is a dry cleaners now but apparently they used to sell all of their produce and uh, across the road you'll be able to see a field um, that was a big plot, that road that you can see on the left wasn't there before and it was a big plot of land that Grandad Disco used to grow all of the produce to sell in the shop so they were obviously very savvy when it came to business and apparently they did quite well from it so yeah, it's really interesting so in Berska Street in Ormskirk, she had a little shop and all the produce was sold in there as well. So she was always behind the counter. It's piles and piles of potatoes on a, a bench and you'd lift up some wood partition and the potatoes would come um, rolling down and she used to scoop them up in an old scale and weigh them out and she could twist a bag like nobody. She'd pour the potatoes into a paper bag and just get the ends and flick it over and over and over and they were just, you know, it was sealed, sealed tight. Never ripped a bag and never lost a potato. I'm not sure what it is now. It was a hat shop at some stage. But um, yeah, it's still there. 
So we're standing at the clock tower now. Let's give you an idea as to where everything is in comparison to where this is. So this is basically the center of town. Down that road down there is where you'll see a Grand Briscoe shop. Down that road down there you'll see the church in the background. If you keep heading generally in that direction you'll see uh, uh, Mum Sam and Granddad Mimi's place just down there. Down the street here and a bit further up is where Granddad Briscoe lived and that's also where St Anne's church is and the graveyard is. And down here this is where the markets are and they go all the way down this road as well. Now standing outside of the house that Mum used to live in on Hesketh Road in Bursco. She lived here with her family and their Labrador dog Bruce. You'll see the grass which is there. It's actually the grass that Granddad put in himself. Mum tells me that their dog Bruce used to run out in the massive fields that are in the rear of this property. He used to just run loose and um, roll in cow pats all day and then he would come home and try and get inside by actually lifting the knocker on the door and knocking on the door. And every time they'd hear a knock at the door, Nana would just say, oh, don't worry about it, it's just Bruce. Just leave it, it's just Bruce. Mum also tells me that the electricity here used to be run by a electricity meter box on the side of the building where they'd actually have to put money into it to keep it going, like a shilling at a time. And one Christmas morning they woke up and the electricity ran out didn't have any shillings on hand to put into the electricity box so mum had to run down the street um, knocking on each of the doors on Christmas morning in the uh, freezing cold and the snow to uh, ask anyone if they could use a lecky shilling which is what they called it which, uh, which is an electricity box shilling and you'll see the window just above the front door to the left that was mum's room when she lived here This is where Mum went to primary school before she moved to Australia. Mum has given me a few photos of her when she had her communion, she was all dressed in white, of her and her family standing next to a tree which looks like it has just been planted. Uh, we managed to find the same tree and just happens to have got quite a bit bigger since then. Mum used to go uh, to the church which is just up the road for service two times a week when she went to school here and she says she remembers how stuffy it was and the smell of the fur in the church and uh, sometimes it got her out of having to go to church because she didn't feel well. tells a story how she would uh, always come in here and her favourite part was lighting a candle inside with Aunty Carol. There's a Catholic church in Ormskirk as well, St Anne's Catholic Church. Nan and Mum were very Catholic and Josie. So when we stayed around with them on a weekend, we'd always go to church on a Sunday. So it was a beautiful church inside from what I can remember, but uh, the best thing that we found about going into that church was there was a little section on the side there and you could light a candle and we just loved that. And so we'd go up and ask Nan for a penny because it used to cost you a penny. So we'd put the penny in the slot and choose a little candle and then just light it. I think you're supposed to say a prayer for someone in particular, but we just lit the candle. We ended up, you know, every now and again we'd blow a couple of candles out and just relight them just for the fun of it. Now, um, Nan and Grandad are buried there somewhere. We're on a bit of a mission now to find out where where they are. It's yeah, a bit hard to work out how, why people don't know this stuff, but. Uh, they've got very old uh, record-keeping practices in the church, so apart from a few pictures on the wall and a couple of scribbles in a book, it's pretty hard to work it out. So that's something that uh, we'll carry on and try and work out where they are and, uh, yeah, just make sure it's kept nice for them. They were such special people. They need to be remembered like that. We have just spent uh, a few hours looking through all the gravestones and through all the historical records. 
was trying to find Grandad Nibby and Mum's Nat. But we've had a bit of difficulty. The records are really old and not very well kept. And there are a lot of remains here that don't have the headstones and that aren't uh, recorded in the documents. So despite our best efforts, we haven't been able to find them. Uh, but what we'll do instead, we'll go inside the church and we'll light a candle for around the corner from the church was Coronation Park and we used to go there as well as kids. That was a big green space where you could go and play. They had uh, lots of swings and a couple of uh, pieces of equipment. We also had a pond in there and um, we used to go around with little nets, a little just a little stick with a net on the end and a jar and fill the jar with the water out the pond and then we'd go fishing for these what we call tiddlers. They were tiny, tiny, weeny little fish and then we put them in the jar, which was really a death sentence because they never survived. So we're just going to do a quick walk through Coronation Park. This is where uh, Mum's Nan used to take her to visit all the time. Um, and they would play on the playground, which Mum said was massive, but doesn't look so big <laughs> at it now. Um, and they used to go over to the pond and play in the pond and catch fish in the pond. So we'll take a walk there now. And here we are at the pond where mum used to feed the ducks. Chickens do do now. So I guess I'm so pleased and so happy that um, Jamie and Alice have made it to Ormskirk and can see for themselves what a pretty little place it is and, and also you know for Jamie to connect with you know his, his history and his heritage and, and it was fabulous that he um, caught up with and Alice caught up with Bernard as well. So Bernard is my dad's cousin. Um, and Josie's son and I think the last time I saw Bernard was just before we left so he would have been probably around about 16. Uh, well I'm Bernie from Omskirk and I've used to come in this park playing football years ago when I was a little lad. In relation to? I'm in relation to William and Nibby and Maggie and everybody who lives in Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> And this is my girl, my my wife. Yes, I could say girlfriend now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've not got used to it yet. <laughs> yeah, and this my, is, yeah, used to I'm that, Colette, yeah. Bernie's wife. Um, I'm from Liverpool originally. I'm married Bernie six, and been married to Bernie a year. Been together six. I've had been doing the sunny side of Ormskirk to show Jamie and Alice where uh, they grew up, where Bernie grew up, and been around Ormskirk just after the general. Nice to see you all. <laughs> see you soon. Best regards. <laughs> I'm so grateful that um, Jamie has had a, had a chance to go and see where I grew up, and you know it might put things into a little bit of context sometimes. You know, especially with English people, he probably knows where I come from now and why I am the way I am. Um, anyway, that's enough from me. I love you too. I can't wait to see you again and um, I'll talk to you really soon. Bye.